pantry and I am super excited to bring you this recipe. Is it off my diet? Absolutely, but it is so delicious and it was inspired by one of my very best friends. I just consider her to be one of the sweetest friends I've ever had. And that's Gay over at Apron Strings. I'll leave a link to her channel down below. Um, you'll love the stuff that she does. But she inspired me. She made a Cracker Barrel potato casserole with shredded potatoes, frozen potatoes. And I made a similar version for a dinner as a side dish and it was such a huge hit. I thought, you know what, I've got to make this. And I'm making it um, a little bit different than the Cracker, cracker Barrel recipes. Um, a little bit more loaded. This is going to be a loaded hash brown casserole. And I'm doing a half, it's smaller than the one I did um, from her recipe. And so this is my eight by eight um, Tupperware pan. You can start it in the microwave, finish it in the oven, store it, take it to the table. It's wonderful. I absolutely love these pans. I have the lasagna pan and that's what I use for the big, bigger casseroles. But today I'm just going to do a smaller one. I'm going to be sharing this with my daughter. So, um, cause I can't, I'm going to have one little serving. That's it. So in my, in my bowl, and I'm going to bring you in close, I have a can of cream and mushroom soup. I have a heaping, kind of pressed down cup of cheddar cheese. I have three slices of bacon that I cooked off and cut up into small little chunks. I've got a half a can of water chestnuts that I cut up. Mm, love them. For some crunch in there. It's, it's nice to get some crunch. A half of a sweet onion. And then I have a jar a uh, four ounce jar of pimentos. And, sorry, um, I'm gonna use approximately a half a cup or maybe a third of a cup of sour cream, full fat sour cream. One of these cartons of shredded hash brown potatoes, I get these at Costco, <clears throat> these are Idaho spuds, they're delicious. You add water and just let, leave, leave them sit and rehydrate, they're dehydrated. And one leak from my garden, I told you guys in my garden update that I'd be doing this. And so I've already washed it and I'm gonna use the leaves because right now they're still pretty tender. I'm just gonna cut them up really fine. So let me bring you in and we'll get this whole thing started. It couldn't be easier. It's absolutely wonderful. It's a super easy recipe. Okay, and so I do want to mention, I've got my oven preheating in my convection oven. It's preheating to 375 degrees. Look at the inside of this beautiful leek. It's just beautiful. All the little layers that are forming. But you can eat leeks at any stage. I could have two beds like that um, full of leeks. I'm just so thrilled with my garden. And eating salads every day out of there. Fresh veggies. Um, reaping all the benefits of a backyard garden. And being able to share some of this, you know? So this is gonna add a nice green and slightly different flavor of onion. I'm a big onion fan anyway, but just a slightly different flavor of onion to this dish. And now we're getting into the white part of the, um, the leek. And uh, this fall potato leek soup is in and I make a loaded potato leek soup that, um, oh, I, yeah, sorry, I've got a sample nail. <laughs> Get my nails done later. And I, I wanted to try this color on to see if I liked it for toes. And I did. Okay. So I need some cracked black pepper to go in. And I'm just going to grind that right on my, uh, we'll move this out of the way and bring in my bowl. And we're going to crack that pepper down in my bowl. There's nothing better than fresh cracked black pepper and I'll top the casserole with a little bit more because I really enjoy it. Okay and then I'm gonna eyeball the uh, sour cream but roughly that's roughly a third of a cup of sour cream and this is full fat local well, as local as it can be. Um, this is a Tillamook. Oh, so good. And so is their cheese. And that's the cheese I'm using. 
And because the pimentos, I've drained off some of that liquid, but because they have a little bit of liquid, they'll loosen this right up. So let's get this all incorporated first. And then, yes. Now, you could use, if you make your own cream of chicken, which I do, um, cream of chicken starter, you can use that. You can use, I mean, this is, when you're having a small serving, it's not that bad. And they just, these cream soups, I don't care what anybody says, they're a great helper in the kitchen. Yeah, see, I want to see flecks of pepper, so a little bit more. And you could use already ground if you've got a coarse grind. You want because potatoes love pepper. Now I'm not adding any additional salt. That's not going to happen. Let's get our veggies all in here. And um, bacon. Mmm, yum. Oh, there's the oven singing. Singing the praises that it is ready for me to add the dish. It doesn't take long. My oven preheats in about five minutes, which is nice. Okay, now it looks good already. Mm hmm. Yum. Now you can take this mixture, and I have done this. <clears throat> you can take this mixture. And around the holidays, you know, you're, you're doing all kinds of stuff. And um, I'll bake off potatoes. Take the insides out, and you can use that for potato salad or whatever you want. You mix up this kind of mixture and put it in the potato skins. And it gives a different texture because of the shredded potatoes. And I'm going to add most of my cheese, but I want to save a little bit for the top. So that's why I kind of make a heaping cup of cheese. You can easily double this recipe. If you double the recipe, you want to use two pounds of hash brown potatoes, whether they're frozen or these dehydrated. Let's go ahead and get that in there. Like I said, these rehydrate really nicely and they're inexpensive at Costco. They're delicious. Okay. Oop, man overboard. So I'm just going to mix this all together make a huge mess and we'll get it in the pan. Okay, so now we've got it all mixed together and we're gonna go ahead and get it down in our pan. And I grade my own cheese. I use my Tupperware Great um, Fusion Master Grater. It makes quick work, and I usually do two pounds of cheese at a time. It takes me about mm, five, ten minutes to do all that, and then I have it on hand for any recipes I might be. So sometimes, when because there's no um, there's no cornstarch to keep it separated or modified food starch like what they put in um, pre-grated cheese. It doesn't melt as good, but even if there's a little pocket of cheese that's stuck together, it's just going to make this that much more delicious to whoever ends up with that pocket. <laughs> Does that make sense? Does that make sense? And I do see the flecks of peppers, so we're going to sprinkle the rest of this cheese, which is probably a quarter of a cup of cheddar, on the top. We'll make it pretty. And I love this pan, not only, these are the Ultra Pro pans, but not only because they're convenient, you can store them, they're pretty enough to go on the table, they're lightweight, but when you cook them with the lid on, that cheese won't burn. You will not over brown your tops. Lasagna comes out absolutely perfect in these pans. And yes, they're a little bit of money, but if you want to have a Tupperware party online with me, you could earn one for free. All right. Let's go get this in a 375 degree oven for approximately 30 minutes. Okay guys, I just took this out of the oven. And look at that. It's still bubbling and hot, but the hash browns get crispy on the bottom and around the edges. And look at the flecks of green and red. It's just beautiful. I cannot wait to taste this and dive in. I see pieces of bacon. 
And so we're gonna let this cool off and um, I'll, I'll let it cool with the lid off. But as you can see, having the lid on, it doesn't get too brown on top. It browns it perfectly. And that's exactly what you want. This is a great dish to add to any meal. You can also reheat this in the micro pro grill <clears throat> and it'll, it'll keep that crunchy on the bottom and the, cr and the crispy top and then top it with a runny egg for breakfast. It is delicious. Any way you do it. But this is a side dish, so um, I'll bring it back for a taste test and let you know mm, how it tastes. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so I've dished up a small portion and took some pictures for you to see it up close. This is so good. I snuck a little bite. I did the Paula Deen sneak you know, into the corner. I couldn't help it while it was cooling down and it was torturing me. So you've got that kind of um, cr crispy topping, but the edges and the bottom all get crispy browned hash browns. So like crunchy and oh, so good. Anyway, I had a couple pleasant surprises with this. Mmm. Mmm. It's creamy, it's cheesy, but you can definitely taste the leek in there. And even though the leek is such a mild flavor, you get that, just that wonderful surprise. And I can taste the pimentos, the bacon. It all stands out. And then you get the crunch of the water chestnut. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. So delicious. I hope that you try this recipe. It's very easy. It's holiday worthy or a family get together. This also, believe it or not, is delicious at room temperature or even cold. Um, now, if I was gonna serve it, let's say, at room temperature or chilled at a um, get together, I would probably leave out the bacon. But that being said, Oof, the bacon is delicious in here. So I hope you try the recipe. Let me know in the comment section below if you've done a recipe like this before. I'm sure a lot of you have, but um, I have to say thank you to my friend Gay over at April and Strings for the inspiration because mm, it pulled me off my diet. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> mm. Okay, that's all I'm gonna eat. The rest is going to my daughters. All right, guys. I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe using things out of the garden as well as things that I have in my home can pantry and my pantry shelves. This was super easy to put together. I had everything